summing up his life in office, Mr. Lee, in his book, One Man's View of the World, shared this, quote, at critical turning points, fortune smiled on me. This place could have easily collapsed, but the integration of the world and globalization allowed us to play a role, end of quote. In 1965, out of Malaysia and without a hinterland, Mr. Lee and his team had to deal with the shock of having to make a tiny island a nation. But succeed, they did. Mr. Lee said his greatest satisfaction in life came from the fact he had spent years gathering support, mustering the will to make Singapore meritocratic, corruption-free and equal for all races, and that it will endure beyond him. Brass Fasa Road has been home to some of the most famous and oldest landmarks in Singapore. From the former St. Joseph's Institution, now the Singapore Art Museum, to the site of the former Raffles Institution where Mr. Lee studied, where Raffles City now stands. Singapore's Education Minister Heng Sri Kiet, who was the Principal Private Secretary to Mr. Lee, said this in September 2013. Quote, he distributed the fruits of Singapore's progress in a very significant way by enabling Singaporeans to own their flats. Apart from the investment in education, he donated generously to the Education Fund to provide awards especially to outstanding students from poor families. He is a firm advocate of a fair and just society, but he demands that everyone, including those who are helped, put in their fair share of effort. End of quote. As the ceremonial gun carriage turns into Northbridge Road, one of the earliest and longest roads in Singapore, Singaporeans from all walks of life have come forward to pay their respects to Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. On 19th May 2011, Mr. Lee, then Minister Mentor and at the age of 87, marked the end of his 52 years in government when he attended his final cabinet meeting. 
On that day, Mr. Lee recalled the afternoon in June 1959 when he was just 35 years old and the Prime Minister of a country just embarking on self-government. For the next five decades, Mr. Lee would be an indomitable presence around the table. The first 31 years as Prime Minister and then as a trusted senior advisor, a data bank as he once described himself. The mood during that final cabinet meeting in the wood-panelled room in the Astana was reflective. Home Affairs and Law Minister K. Shanmugam said it was seeing history being made. Adding, Mr. Lee symbolised Singapore, a leader not just of a party but of a whole movement. Singapore's former cabinet minister, Professor S. Jayakumar, who served in the cabinet for 27 years, said, Mr. Lee could be persistent, but was always intellectually honest. It was he who pushed for the creation of an elected presidency and to have non-constituency MPs in parliament. As the state vehicular procession slowly makes its way into the driveway of Parliament House, Singaporeans waiting patiently just outside the entrance to offer their respects. Bearers represent the three branches of Singapore government the executive, legislative, and the judiciary. Representing the legislature are two members of the parliament secretariat. First, Mr. A. Palenepen, who has provided simultaneous translation for Parliament since Mr. Lee's days as Prime Minister. Second, Ms. Aoyong Chuan Song, from the Official Reports Department, which compiles verbatim records of parliamentary proceedings.
representing the executive are three public servants. Mr. Benny Lim, concurrently Permanent Secretary of National Development and the Prime Minister's office. Mr. Aaron Maniam, Director of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And Mr. Stanley Tan Singh Chuan, a Senior Constituency Manager with the Bonavista Constituency Office. And representing the Judiciary are Mr. C. Ki Un, Presiding Judge of the State Courts of Singapore and a Judicial Commissioner of the Supreme Court. Madam Masayu Norashikin, a District Judge of the Family Justice Courts and Ms. Marina Wang Meng Si, a Mandarin interpreter at the Supreme Court. Parliament House, 
The casket is received by the Chief of Defence Force, Lieutenant General Ng Chi Ming, and Commissioner of Police, Hung Wee Tech, Speaker of Parliament, as well as the Prime Minister and the rest of the family. Coffin bearer party will now transfer the coffin of Mr. Lee onto the bier for the lying in state at the Parliament House. Parliament House, the casket is received by the Chief of Defence Force, Lieutenant General Ng Chi Meng, and Commissioner of Police, Hung Wee Tae, Speaker of Parliament as well as the Prime Minister and the rest of the family. The grandsons holding the photograph of the late Mr Lee Kuan Yew and family members walking into the Parliament House. The Coffin Bearer Party will now transfer the coffin of Mr. Lee onto the bier for the lying in state at Parliament House.
family members are now moving forward towards the coffin of the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, and the grandsons are placing the photo of Mr. Lee on a pedestal. The modern city-state that Singapore is today owes much to the thinking, decisions and influence of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew over the past decades. Just outside the entrance to the Parliament House, Singaporeans are slowly beginning to enter in a short while, they will foul by the coffin of the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew to offer their respects. Special boards have been placed along this stretch for the public near the Singapore Promenade, Singapore River Promenade, to place their written tributes to Mr. Lee. Crowds entering Parliament House to pay their tribute to Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. The gates of Parliament House will remain open to the public from 10 a.m. on Wednesday till Saturday evening for people to come to pay their last respects.
With this, we bring to an end the live coverage of the state funeral procession of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew that began at the Istana and ended with a lying in state at Parliament House. Watching Channel News Asia on day three of national mourning for Singapore's late Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. This mourning scenes never before seen on this island as Singapore prepares to say goodbye to Mr. Lee. Much of the civic district came to a standstill as the gun carriage bearing the flag draped casket was moved from the Astana to Parliament House. Just past 9 a.m. local time, the state flag was draped over the casket. This is the highest such honour that can be accorded to a leader. When the flag covers the casket, it is placed so that the crescent and stars lie over the head and close to the heart. There was then a foot procession from Sri Tamasik as the Singapore Armed Forces Band played Beethoven's funeral march. The procession was led by Chief Mourner, the Prime Minister.